praise. Give him some praise, everybody.
We're saying to you, welcome. Welcome again for tuning in to Chosen Few Community Amen. Fellowship live, live broadcast. We're praying that like the man of God said earlier, that you don't just let that be a habit sitting on your couch. Because he's sitting on the couch, yes, come. It makes you feel good because you're a nice, nice little warm blanket. <laughs> nice cup of coffee on your side with some breakfast. And you can just sit here and just turn up the volume, pause it when you feel need to be. But it's not the same. No, it's not. See, it's something about being in fellowship with Amen. your brothers and sisters that sharpens you, yes. encourages you, yes. looks out for you. Yes. See, all you can't get all that is sitting at home on your couch. Arguing with your kids. Come on, you can't get deep. See, do you know an idle mind is the devil's workshop? Do you know that the enemy loves you to be in an island of your own? That's it. Because he can attack you that way. Isolated. You don't have nobody around you to help you or see what the enemy is doing. You just caught up in your situation. The enemy is just bombarding you. So, do you know that's how he gets you? Come on, Pastor Preach. He brings down. See, he got, the enemy has got the Christians today in 2020 messed a lot of people up. Oh, yeah. Say that. Yeah. They don't even want to step back in the church house anymore because they are afraid. Yeah. See, the spirit of fear has captured our people today. But God said he didn't give us the spirit of fear. Right. He didn't give us that. Uh -huh. We got to be bold. We got to be courageous in Jesus. Amen. So he said, get up out that car. Get up out that car. Get up out that, get up out that chair. Get up out that house. And get yourself into fellowship. And if you don't have a church home, guess what? Come on. What I always say. Come on down to be part of the Chosen Few Community Fellowship family at 5200 Atlantic Avenue in the city of North Long Beach. Zip code is 90805. We will welcome you with open arms. Open arms. Yeah. Open arms. Come on. And you can be one thing you can be guaranteed here. That's the anointing of the Holy Spirit rains yeah. down in this house. And it moves mountains out of your life in the name of Jesus. So again, thank you everybody for tuning in. Thank you for everybody for being here, all of our visitors. We thank you today. God bless you. We pray that the Holy Spirit just engulfs you with his loving yes. arms. Yes. That's what I want. I want the loving arms of God just to wrap around Amen. you. Amen. Letting you know that you are welcome. That letting you know that, yes, the love of God dwells in this house. Hallelujah. That, yes, that we are one big happy family Amen. trying to move forward in the kingdom of God to spread the good news of Jesus Christ right. outside the four walls. Amen. See, the four walls are designed for one thing only, to recharge you up to go back outside. Come the on, walls. come on. That's what the vision God gave me. He said, I give you four walls just to recharge you to get outside the four walls. Right. I'm okay with that. You, are you okay with that? Splendid. Yeah. Remember, we started up as an outreach ministry five years ago. So we know how to get outside the four walls. Right. So once he gave us our four walls, we never feel comfortable in here. No. We come in to get recharged, but then get out. That's, right. That's how we roll That's in here. Right. That's right. We come in to get recharged just so we can go back out. Okay. To bring more souls where? In the house That's to get, right. do what? Be recharged and do what? Go right. back out. That's, right. That's what it's all about. Amen. So let's get this, let's get this good. going for Jesus. Praise God. Oh man, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Well, I just want to thank again everybody for being here um, at this time. I'm going to bring up our woman of God, Minister Claudia. She's going to give us our tithes. She's going to go over our tithes and offerings and all of our announcements. Come on up, woman of God. It's all yours. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, since you guys were at home watching, you didn't get to feel the fire of God that just come on. Come on. over this yeah. altar. But let me tell you, it just felt like waves of fire yes. on this altar. Come on. And I want to share with you guys today a scripture for tithes and offerings. Yes. Uh, the Lord gave me this word before I came to church, and I did not know what songs they were going to um, play here. I did not know what my husband was going to be preaching on. But I got a feeling that everything's connected. Yes. So far, yeah. the songs were connected. Yeah. Um, it's about giving, right? Tithes and offerings. Where do we first hear about offerings? It's in Cain and Abel in Genesis. When they first offered, Cain offered his sacrifice that wasn't really worthy of God. His vegetables that were like whatever. And Abel offered the meat, right? The animals, his first animal, the best of the animals, the choice he has made. That's what God was pleased with. Yes. But that's to show us where the human heart is. What are we offering to God? Yes. So today I'm going to talk about what we are offering to God in our heart. Also, the first mention of tithes was in Genesis 14, when Abraham gave his tenth. That's the first time that yes. he gave Amen. a tenth yes. to uh, Melchizedek, King Melchizedek. I hope I pronounced that right. I always mispronounce that. But it's not just about giving our money. 
It's not just about giving or offering. No. It's more than that. So when we're in the new covenant, yeah, speak, speak. Jesus took it into a whole new level. The Old Testament did it one way, and the tithing, the offerings, but now Jesus took it to a whole new level. And he doesn't just want your tithes. He wants all of you. That's right. But what does that look like? So he brought this scripture that I'm about to read, Amen. and we're going to pray over the tithes and offerings. It's a message that God wants to give you guys. What does that look like? And this is in Colossians, Colossians chapter 3, verse 23 to 24, and I'm reading out of the Amplified. Whatever you do, Whatever your task may be, work from the soul. Mm. That is, put in your very best effort yes. as something done for the Lord and not for men. Oh, yeah. Knowing oh, with all certainty that it is from the Lord, not from men, yes. that you will receive the inheritance, which is your greatest reward. Oh, it is the Lord Christ whom you actually serve. Why am I reading this? Yeah. Because when we're talking about tithes and offerings, Jesus took it to a whole new level. Yes. He wants your whole heart. He wants you to serve with your whole yes. heart. He wants you to do everything you do in your life as if you're doing it unto the Lord. Amen. He doesn't want you to be like Cain and do it begrudgingly on, speak, and speak. offer him filthy offerings that are not given from the heart. He doesn't want you to be like Abraham and just give your tithe and you're over with you. Check out the box. He wants you to do everything that you do, do it unto the Lord. Amen. Everything. Whether it's serving in your community, yes. whether it's you going to work every day, whether it's you ministering to somebody, whether it's you with your children, you with your husband, you with your friends, whatever it is you're doing, do it as if you're doing it unto the Lord and consider that a part of your offering, a part of your tithing. When you look at things that way, you're actually giving to God all day Amen. long, all Amen. of you. He That's wants it. all of you. And it was something he wanted me to remind you guys yes. today. Amen. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for these tithes and yes. offerings, yes. Lord, yes. that yes. we're receiving. Father God, I pray for people's hearts, Lord, <clears throat> for their minds, Father God, to be one with you, Father God. Not to be double-minded in what we do, Father God, but be to, to be sold out for you, Father God. To be on fire for you, Father God. To do everything as if we're doing it to you, Father yes. God. We pray this in Jesus' name. Yes. Now I'm getting to the announcement part. So announcements. We have four announcements. The first one is that the men will be will be doing session number two for their sixth session workshop tomorrow night at 7 p.m. here at the Chosen Few Community Fellowship in the Fellowship Hall. If you would like to be part of the worship, workshop, uh, to be here, be here tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Also, they will be having prayer from 6.30 to uh, 6.50 our second announcement is Thursday night, we'll be continuing our revelation study taught by Minister Kerry. We will be having a war room prayer from 6.45 to 7.15, and our interactive Bible study starts at 7.30 p.m. on Thursday. Our third announcement is next Sunday, we will be having communion immediately after service, so we invite you to come with us to fellowship. And our fourth announcement is that we would like to remind you that we will be having our Thanksgiving giveaway. Our outreach event is on November 24th at 10.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. in the parking lot of the church. We are accepting donations in the form of money, goods, and dry food goods. Please contact Pastor Henry through Messenger on Facebook if you would like to donate towards this event. His Facebook profile is Henry Jr., also, if you would like to volunteer to help with the distributions, please also let Pastor Henry know. Thank you. Amen. Yeah. Whew. Amen. Praise God. I'm on double duty today. <laughs> we we, we um, have some apps on some of our ministers' apps in the day, but that's okay. I can do more than one task. Amen. Right. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Well, I just want to give God glory today. I just want to thank God for another opportunity to introduce such an awesome man of God. I mean, Pastor Jonathan has been with us, been with me, my road dog from day one. Amen. Day one. Our, our, ministry, our ministry started off in their house Amen. in Bellflower over five years ago <laughs> in their living room. <laughs> That's how God opened this, opened up this door for this ministry to get going. And so his wife and, his wife and he are just like, like super dear to my heart. Some of, our, they are, some of our best friends, but also, my, I call him my road dog in ministry. I call, I call him my, my bodyguard. <laughs> He's super strong, and so he protects, he protects me. So I, when, I, when I'm walking next to him, 
I don't worry about nobody messing with me. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So, but this man of God, I've seen the transformation over the years. I mean, from when he started out to where he is right now as our Amen. associate pastor. I'm telling you, if I could just take y'all all back in a time machine. When he was doubtful about his calling over his life and how God had to constantly get on him about his calling. Now, I have called you. Man hasn't called you, but I have called you. Constantly encouraging him, not only just from people coming around through his wife, through friends and family, letting him know that God called you for this, not man. And because he called you for this, he will equip you. That's right. To do his work. Right. And I've seen over the I've seen over the years how God has just grown him. Tremendously has grown him. And I could not be more proud in my spirit. I don't get to introduce him very often. Because everybody else be doing all that. So when I get the opportunity to introduce him, I'm going to introduce him right. <laughs> and I just want to thank you, man of God, for being the man of God that you are and for continuously striving to walk in your calling that he has given you. Amen. So without further ado, I want to introduce this awesome man of God, Associate Pastor, Pastor Jonathan, who's going to come up and let the Holy Spirit use him like I always know he do. So come on up, man of God. And let's God use you. Come on. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How's everyone doing? Just bless. So thankful to the Lord that yeah. on his time, little by little, we yes. start seeing a little bit more uh, more seats being filled up. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Thank you, Jesus. Uh, let me start off by just saying a prayer so I can get myself out the way. Yes, Lord Jesus. Heavenly Father, Lord, you are so faithful, Father God. Everything you do, Father God, even when we're Allow that doubt to start creeping in, Father yes, God. You always show through, Father God. Yes, Lord Jesus. You know, and it always reminds us that we can trust in you yes, with Lord everything. Yes, so, Lord. Heavenly Father, I just ask that you help me just get myself out of yes, the way, Father God. Right now, less of me and more of you, Father yes, God. I ask that your Holy Spirit just come down yes, and take over this vessel, yes, Father yes, God. Lord, Lord, I love you. I praise you. Yes, I worship you in Jesus' mighty name. Jesus. Amen. 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 So, as you, uh, most of you know, the, the title of my uh, message is called Take It to Jesus. Yes, yes. Right. Amen. And, <clears throat> you know, um, as I was uh, doing my little study and research, and not just that, but also just my daily, you know, life, <laughs> working, and, you know, at home, and coming to, to service, and like I said before, it doesn't matter how many years you've been serving, how many degrees you have, the enemy's going to come for you. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. He's going to come to start putting doubt. Yes. He's going to come to bring anxiety and worry and, 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 and you know, allow, uh, try to get whatever you struggle with, anger, Yes. right, depression, Yes. no matter what it is, it'll start trying to you know, discourage you from, from right. pursuing the things of God, right? Yeah, yeah. Staying in line with, with the Lord. So, <clears throat> when I sent Pastor Henry the title for my message, I was like, all right, Lord, okay. And then days were coming by and I was like, is this what the Lord wants me to preach on? <laughs> maybe, maybe it was the other one. And, yeah, I, was, and I was like, oh, man. And then, you know, my wife's like, oh, are you done? Are you ready? And I'm like, I ain't ready, you know. <laughs> I'm not ready, you know. I never feel ready because it's never really me, right? Amen. I have to give it. To, I have to give it to the Lord, so the Holy Spirit, so He can take over. You know, I'm just. This is just the best right here, right? But like I said, God is so faithful, and He will let yes, you know. Yes, yes, I'm right here. That's I'm right. standing right here. I am before you. I'm going before you. I'm on either side of you, and I got your back. I'm yeah. behind you. So I'm here, uh, and we start praying, right? Because that's what we do when we begin. We do a little, you know, prayer um, uh, war room. And as soon as the prayer started coming on, I'm like, man, I start getting that, uh, you know, uh, the Lord just like drilling in me, like, see, Pastor prayed on us certain certain things, and I was like, okay, Lord, I hear you, Amen. All right? And then it went to. Uh, 
brother uh, uh, David, and they moved a lot. And I'm like, man. On, but then, but then I was like, I was still kind of okay, a little bit. I'm, I'm not. And then, and then he handed it over to my wife and, and brother Tim. And then I was like, oh man. <laughs> and then he capped it off with uh, brother uh, Ran, Pastor, uh, yeah. And I was like, all right, Lord. All right, Lord. Jesus. I know this is what you want me to preach on. Huh? I know this is what you want. And then the worship started, and oh man, it was, all, it was all connected. It was all connected, just like my wife said. It's all Jesus. connected. So the Lord will confirm mm -hmm. when something is what Amen. He wants he to preach for us. He will yeah. confirm it with you. Yes, He does. So we're going to get into the Word so we can uh, see how to take it to Jesus, why we should take it to Jesus. Amen, amen. So, as you know, the Word of God encourages believers to cast their cares and struggles upon the Lord, Jesus. Right, amen. amen. Trusting in His care and provisions. Yes. I believe Minister Rand uh, prayed on that, right? Amen. This example is amplified in 1 Peter uh, chapter 5, verse 7. Which says, casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Amen. But let's read it out of my ESV. I, you know, so. <laughs> so, chapter 5, verse uh, 7. The word of God reads, casting all your anxieties on him, because he cares for you. Amen. We all struggle. We all allow anxiety to take a grasp, right? To take hold. Some of them, some of us don't show it though, right? Because, you know, some of us have that, you know, I'm not going to let nobody know what I'm going through, right? I'm tough. I can't let nobody know that I'm, you know, I'm, especially, you know, if you're, if, if you have people under you that, that are looking for that strong, right, uh, uh, person, right? So, I gotta be strong for my my wife and my children. I can't let them see me worry because if they're worrying, right. and then I start worrying, yeah, who's driving the ship? Yeah, the, the ship is like mayday, mayday, right? Or the <laughs> plane, the plane, you know. <laughs> but did you know? And I got this from when I was doing my little research. Anxiety or worry. It's a form of pride. Mm. Wow. See, in my little commentary here, in my study guide, it says, worry is a form of pride because it involves taking concerns upon oneself instead of entrusting them to God. Believers can trust God because as, the, as their father, he cares for them, just like what First Peter Said, uh, chapter, uh, chapter, First Peter, chapter five or seven said, "He loves us. He is there for us, and He will be there for us." Amen. It's up to well, it's on us yes. that when we start facing those trials, when we start struggling with whatever it is that that it, we're facing that day, whether it's financial, whether it's uh, anger, in my case, whether it's depression. Whether it's pride, whether it's not being able to take it to Jesus and just giving it to him and then leaving it at his altar or at his feet. We all struggle with that. We got to be reminded. Yes. And now I know that this is why the Lord wanted me to preach on this. Come on, say that. We might, you know, you say, but man, I, you know, I've been I've been with the Lord, serving the Lord for for many years or many months, and they, I shouldn't be going through this. I asked Pastor Henry to play that first song. That song is called "Where Were You." Some people know it as Job Job song, right? Because it's when Job was asking the Lord, "Why is you know what's going on?" Was uh, he said I had all these questions. And it comes down to is that quit worrying about that and trust in me. Amen. Trust in me. Where were you when I built this? Where were you when I did this? Where were you when I formed all this? 
See, our ways are not the Lord way, uh, Lord's way. His understanding, we don't come close to his understanding. We're always here asking, why are things happening to me, Lord? Why is this happening to me? I've been serving you. Well, maybe instead of asking and doing that, just get on your knees. Take it to him. I need your strength, Lord. I need help. Because right now, I'm, I'm allowing worry to overcome. I'm uh, allowing anxiety. Some people get anxiety so bad, they, want, they, they pass out. Yeah. That's not good. We need to be able to come to the Lord with everything, whether it's lust, whether it's an addiction with drugs, with porn, right? There's many other things, but we need to take it to the Lord. He is the only one that can help us. But we need to trust that, that he will do it for us. Now the word of God is so, from the, from, the, from the front to the end, that's all it talks about. That's right. It talks about how to trust in him, that he's going to be there for us. Amen. Let's talk about God's faithfulness. But before I move on, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. That first Peter chapter five or seven, let's go, go on to uh, Psalm 37. Amen. Psalm 37, just so you can see that the, the word of God will confirm the word of God. Amen. Verse 37 uh, excuse me, chapter 37, verse 5. The word of God reads, Commit your ways to the Lord, trust in him, and he will act. Amen. That's right. Some translation will say he'll make it come to pass. Right? Amen. So that's that's the second time that the word of God is telling you, trust in me. I got you. Yes. Now this one, I'm going to have to use the AMP because I like the way the AMP <laughs> translates this one, right? It amplifies. <laughs> Let's go to uh, Psalm chapter 55. Okay. Uh -huh. Psalm chapter 55. Mm -hmm. Verse Verse 22. Huh. How good of my wife to already have highlighted it. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Come forward. The word of God reads, cast your burden on the Lord, release it, and he will sustain and uphold you. He will never allow the righteous to be shaken. Come on. Slip, fall, fail. Come on. And of course, that aligns with 1 Peter chapter 5 or 7. Oh, amen, amen, that's right. See how God is good? Yes. Yeah. How do you take it to God? Come on. How do you learn to take it to God? You've got to stay in your word. You've got to stay in your word. That's it. Right. And that's another thing that the enemy comes and attacks us with. Yep. He'll come and Oh, you ain't got time right now. Mm -hmm. You got to go do this. You got to go do that. You got to go here. You got to go there. Uh, leave it for later. Right? Or he'll start like, man, I'm so tired. I work two shifts. You know, I work 12-hour shifts. Right? But yet you're still there watching TV right before you go to sleep. You're right there watching TV. <laughs> Come on, right? That's true. But you ain't got time. Oh, well, it's dark in there. There's no light in here. You know, I can't really read my word, right? Come on, speak. There's, they're all excuses. Yes. All excuses that the enemy puts forth in your flesh. Yep. It's like, yeah, man, you're right. Mm -hmm. But this is how we have to fight in the spirit against that. That's right. Amen, amen. These are the kind of attacks that we have to fight in the spirit. Just like my brother preached on this morning. He woke up a little groggy or groovy, however he said it, <laughs> until he realized, man, Lord, Come on. I need to give this to you. That's right. 
And he's and he's the second prayer they, they kicked it off. The Holy Spirit was already working up, you know? That's right. Amen. <laughs> so we can see and learn from the word of God that the Lord is faithful to us. Amen. All he requires is that we stay in his word. Yes. Now let's talk about God's faithfulness. Yes. Scripture assures us that God is faithful and will not allow us to be tempted beyond what we can bear. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. The word of God reads, No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, pay attention, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. Come on. Amen. So there's nothing. Really, we have no excuse That's right. to blame anything. That's right. Come on. When we're not pursuing the things of God. When concerns come forth and present themselves, we shouldn't we shouldn't allow, yeah, it's gonna shake us up, right? But right away, the, the first thing, the first thing that we should do, Lord. Lord, yeah. how am I going to handle this? I can't handle this. Please take this. Come on. That's right. That's right. Take this, Lord. Yes. And just give me the strength that no matter what's going on around you, right? There could be wars. There could be rioting, right? Everybody's talking into the world because of this election. <laughs> Pastor preached on it last week, right? I spoke a little bit on it too. Guess what? None of that should worry any of us who are in Christ. All we have to do is be ready, just like the Word of God says. Be ready, be in Him, be in His Word, and be about His, his business. Be about our Father's business. Proclaiming the kingdom of God. Taking the, the good news of Jesus Christ to the lost. Feeding the, the, the hungry. Clothing the, 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 the ones who are naked. Come on. That's what we need to be concerned with. Because guess what? The Lord is going to place whoever he desires in that White House. Okay? Because, let me tell you something, family. This country or whatever country, if they've been off track with the Lord, guess what? He's going to allow, it. He's going to allow that country to go through some hard times. Amen. The word of God teaches us that this is what happens. He allows because they moved away from his ways, from his word. Sister, you preached, you, you spoke on it a little bit right now. They don't even realize it and they're doing the, the works of the devil. They're allowing themselves to be steered because they think we can do this on our own. They start reminding me of, of uh, uh, that, uh, what's his name? The Tower of Babel. Tower of Babel. Yeah. Right. Thought they were so great that we could be just like God and we can oh. control everything. <laughs> Nimrod. Nimrod, Nimrod, yeah. <laughs> we shouldn't worry about what's going to happen. We should keep in prayer, stay in prayer, yes. Yes. keep doing what the Word of God wants us to do. Yes. And whether it's trials that he's going to bring to this country, right. we need to be the ones that are going to be the light. Come on, that's it, that's it. We need to shine that light. Yes. When the when the world that doesn't know Christ, when they see oh, and they're worried, they're going to see the true believers yes. shining. Come on, that's it, that's it. And they're going to be why 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 aren't they worrying? <laughs> What's going on? Because the word of God already told us, no matter, no matter whether we get uh, persecuted, and like we spoke on it before here, 
We ain't seen true persecution in this right. right. <laughs> Okay, we've been pampered here. Yes, we have. Yes, Just a bad comment on, on social media or, or somebody flipping flipping up flipping us off when we're out there uh, evangelizing. <laughs> Flip me off. <laughs> but there's people in other countries who are getting their heads or getting chopped up to pieces because they will not deny Jesus. Come on. So we should be bold out here in this country yes. to stand firm on the word of God, to go do and stand firm for Christ. Amen. Do not be ashamed of Christ. Come on. Come on. Come on. That's it. I want to uh, that 1 Corinthians chapter 13 does, uh, talks about his faithfulness. And let's go to uh, chapter 1, verse 9, and see what the, uh, that has, uh, is going to tell us. Chapter 1, verse, uh, verse 9. Right, just to uh, keep going in the same... Uh, so if the Word of God reads... God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now, that's another, that, that's another uh, twice that is telling yes. you about his faithfulness. Amen. Now, how faithful, how, what, what kind of, uh, let, let's go on, let's go, move on over here to, uh, to Daniel chapter 3. This is such a good story here. I, this is one of the, my favorite stories in, in the book because it shows how we should be no matter what's going on, no matter who's trying to pressure us into bowing down yes. to the things of the devil, we should stand firm on the promises of the Lord, That's right. of his word, that he's going to be with us. That's right. That song said it, somebody think, talked about it. He's going to be the fourth man Come on. in that fire. That's it. Okay? That's so it. Daniel, chapter 3. I think I skipped a little too far. But... Chapter 3, verse 17. The word of God reads, and this is uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, right? Mm -hmm. and, and this is after the king had told him, had told them, when you hear the all the the, the little uh, you know instruments, you bow down right to the idol that I put up right, and, and so this is them answering, if this be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, Come on, that's it. and He will deliver us out of your hand, O King. You see that confidence. Of, of trusting in God. It's like they knew his faithfulness would not yes. abandon them. Yes. They knew that God would not abandon them as long as they were staying in line with God's will. Amen. They knew without a doubt that the Lord would rescue them from this. That's right. Wow. And, and the way he rescued them he didn't take them out of the fire. He came down into the fire with them. Right? Come on. Pay attention to that, fam. He didn't take them out of the fire. He got in the fire with them. Come on. And, 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 and so we got to remind, like, think about this, right? In this time, we go through the trial. We trust the Lord. Yes. No matter what's going on around us. Just like King Nebuchadnezzar, lo, there's a fourth man in the fire, and it looks like the Son of God. <laughs> the world, when they see us going through this trial, they're going to be like, what's... And, and they're going to know, because the Son of God is Come with on. them. Yes, 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 that's it. We should be confident yes. that this is how it's going to be. Amen. Do you believe your word? Do you believe that this is the living word of God? Yes, yes, amen. Infallible? Come on. Look, 
And, the, and let's not get it twisted. There's going to be some people out there, oh, there's so many contradictions. And I go, well, yeah, because this is the English language, right? The English language is so complicated. <laughs> but if you take it to its original form, Hebrew, Aramaic, Greek, Greek there is no ambiguity. The breath of God, come on. There it is, brother. There's no ambiguity. Yeah. That's why to this day, they cannot stump this, this word right here. That's right. Yeah. That's right. It always makes them look like fools. <laughs> come on, speak. Uh, come on. I also want to want you guys to turn over to uh, Psalm 145. And you know me, I get everything I preach, and, and I remind you guys, don't take my word for it. Go research anything and everything that I'm talking about, go research it. Get in your word. Come on. That's me encouraging you, get in your word. That's right. Man. Right? 145 verse 18. The word of God reads, the Lord is near to all who call on him. To all who call on him in truth. Yes. Did you get that? Mm -hmm. Because I see a lot of Christians, so-called Christians, mm. lukewarm Christians. Amen. I was going through this ordeal and, and, and I called on the Lord and nothing happened. Well, how are you living your life? <laughs> you got one foot in. The world and one foot in with Christ, huh? The Word of God says you cannot partake of the cup of God and the cup of demons. Come on. You got to be all in for Christ. So your prayer wasn't answered. Were you in line? With the word of God, were you in line with the Spirit of God? Come on, that's sweet. That's Come sweet. on. Have you been living an obedient life? That's in the As an obedient servant, like the Word of God wants us to be. Wow. He is faithful. That's right. Yes. Yeah. And He will not let you uh, fall. But you have to be in His Word to trust. You have to live your life according to His Word. That's right. You, we gotta, we gotta back away from this. Oh, it's nothing really serious. The Lord knows my heart. Come on. He, absolutely, he absolutely does. He absolutely does. You're not fooling nobody. You're only fooling yourself. Come on, preach. Because if you have to be in line with the Word of God. You have to be aligned with the Spirit of God. Right. So when you're praying, right, your first time praying because something just came upon you, some financial worry, right? Some sickness, illness, and all of a sudden, oh, I remember now. Let me call on my Lord. But the whole time before that, you ain't been trying to meditate on this. You ain't been going to that secret place to go fellowship with him. You know, I desire, you know what? We, we all, we all fall short. That's right. But we have to strive. That's it. That's the thing that we have to strive. You know, I knew my Lord when I was praising Him and worshiping today. And His Holy Spirit just fell on us. I just felt embraced yes. in this warmness. Yes, yeah, exactly. I didn't care who was looking at me. I had that ugly crying for you. <laughs> you know? Because, because I was with my brothers and sisters, but I was I was alone with him at that moment. He was embracing me and telling me it's all going to be okay because I got you. This is how we should be, knowing just like the the three Hebrew boys, they just knew. And if you keep reading, they even said, but even if he does it, that's right, that's right. But even if he does it. We will not bow. That's right. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. That's how we should be. That's right. Now, how do we, how can we get 
built up and be strong and to be able to be aligned with the spirit of God and, and, and you know, and keep in motion, focused on Jesus, right? When we have issues. Prayer and supplication. The Bible teaches us to bring our requests to God through prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving. Philippians 4, chapter 4. Let's go on, mosey on over there. Six. <laughs> Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7. The word of God reads, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your, let your requests be made known to God Amen. and the peace of God. I want you to pay attention to that little part. Right there. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts yes. and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 You know what that means? I can, I can testify a little bit on this part right here. When both my parents passed away, first when my mom passed away, I had my brother and my nephews crying up a storm. They were like, oh, they're crying up a storm, missing... Yeah, I understand. They missed mom. Mom was gone. And I was calm. I was calm. I knew mom was, I was looking at her. I knew mom was gone and I was looking at her body, but I knew that was not mom. Come on. I knew mom was already taken up. Amen. Her spirit was already gone with the That's Lord. Right. So I asked my wife, does it seem weird that, I, that I'm not crying and, and just, all, you know, just all emotional, just like a wreck? And I believe it was her or someone else says, you have the peace of God. That's it. The peace of the Lord is, is, is upon you. That's right. So at that time, we were living in Bellflower. My wife, uh, there was so much stuff, right? Funeral and all that. For my wife, and you know, at that time, at that house, she had her prayer closet. So when nobody was around, I went into that prayer closet. Amen. And I wept. And I gave it to the Lord. That's right. I gave it to the Lord and I thanked him. I thanked him for raising me up with a father and a mother that trained me in the ways of, wow. of God. Thank you. Thank you. I did lose my way. Okay? I did lose my way because I chose right. to lose my way. But it, all those years on the streets, in prison, in certain situations where I was seconds from taking people's lives, the Holy Spirit was like, no. The Holy Spirit was like, no, you don't want to do that. I went through trials because I, I, the Lord allowed them, but I was the one looking for them. That's right. <laughs> but I learned from all that now. That's right, amen. From the pit to the pulpit. Amen. I can preach on that. Amen. He will never leave you, especially if he has a calling on your life. Yes, amen. amen. He's going to allow you to go through some of those trials because it's going to strengthen you. Thank you, Jesus. I've heard people, they call it, some people have said, you're a fire brimstone preacher. You're a turn to burn uh, pastor. <laughs> you know what? When I was in prison, I wanted to, those are the only pastors on TV that I wanted to listen to. Because the ones who did Bible study, I like that. Oh, yeah, it taught me a lot. But the ones that were fire and brimstone, 
Those are the ones that were shaking me up in my bunk. <laughs> and I was like, oh Lord, I know I gotta change. I know the Lord, I know Jesus. The <laughs> That's how I, I would be shaking in my bunk, scared. Then, you know, the homies be like, like, what's up, boy? You ain't gonna come out? No. Nah, man, I ain't coming out. Man. <laughs> Amen. And I remember those days. And even now, when I'm at, at home and oh, I'm at work and something's starting to kind of like uh, creep in and trying to like, you know, start clinging on to me, like worry and, and, and you know, anger, trying to like, you know, uh, rage out. Yeah, yeah. Like, no. No. With my family, I fight. I fight against that. Sometimes I don't even know why I'm angry. I preached on this before, right? Yeah. I don't even know why I'm mad. But I take it to the Lord. I said, Lord, I'm sorry that I'm allowing this to try to raise itself up. Amen. And please take this from me. Amen. I'll either go to my room or I'll go to the little study and I'll, I'll, I'll get in my word. I'll, I'll just start praying, you know. And then when I'm, when I'm okay, I, you know, I'm still a work in progress. I'm not dead. Come on. So the Lord ain't done with me yet. Come on. You know? Come on. Okay. This approach, right, this approach acknowledges God's sovereignty and goodness. While also expressing our dependence on Him. Amen. That's right. Okay. Let's turn. Uh, let's turn on over to Matthew, uh, chapter six, because this 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 goes together with this too. And this is how God is good, right? This is how. Uh, this is why I tell you guys, and I encourage you guys, stay in your word. Stay in your word because He will direct you. He will light not just your path, but He's going to light your study path, right? I want to know about this. How do I get closer to you? How do I become stronger? How, how, how do I get discernment? How do, how, how do I get to understand and know your voice, God, from the lies of the enemy? You start studying his word. Don't just read his word. This is not a, a, a fiction book. This is not just a regular story. This is the bread of life. This is living water. So you study it. And when you start studying it, ooh, the living word comes alive, right? It's like, uh, it's like uh, okay, go ahead. Oh, wait. And, and you know, and, and the, the Christians that came before us are going to do the hard work, right? And I'm thinking about all these footnotes and notes, and, 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 and I'm like, man, it must have took Years. Mm -hmm. For them, like, go to this one, and then you go over here, and then you go over here, and then you come back over here, and you come right back around, boom, right here. But I'm like, man, I thank, thank you, Lord, for all those who came before me, That's right. who Amen. were able to do this for come us, on. so that now I can be edified. Now I can be like, okay, I'm learning, Lord, I'm learning what That's you right. want me to learn. Amen. That's right. Praise God. So Matthew six, verse twenty-five. Through 34. The word of God reads. And the title in my translation, which is the ESV, has it as do not be anxious, right? So therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valued than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. 
But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will not will he not much more clothe you? O oh, you of little faith. Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall I eat? Or what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Amen. And all these things will be added to you. Thank you, Lord. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. This is another reason why I know the Lord confirmed this preaching. Come on. I'm going to testify a little bit. <laughs> so, I was promoted not too long ago. And then, within a week, I get this thing uh, through our little... Uh, you know, business thing, and it says, oh, uh, big old letter, and it says, basically, they're taking $3 off my pay. And they say, you know, what they say is because I'm in sales, that they're going to do, it's not commission, it's like a little bounty, uh, a set thing. But that's if you're selling, a, you know, and the item weekly exactly. or daily that you can see just where I was at or even more. Right. And in the field that I'm in, there's some slow seasons right. where there exactly. ain't gonna be nothing. <laughs> right, exactly. So I was a little discouraged, a little upset. Of course I had a, I gave it to the Lord. Right. Amen. The same thing with um uh, more our finances, right? Um, and the same thing, right? With, with with clothing. My wife was going through it a little bit this morning about I ain't got nothing to wear. <laughs> she had a closet about like <laughs> 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 and then and then she looks over on my side, right? Look at all these clothes you have, which is from over there to about over here. <laughs> And right away I said, I, I think you need to get into prayer. Amen. Because the enemy is trying to work on you, is, is trying to work on you so it can work on me, knowing that I'm about to go preach. Come on. Amen. And because it, it was already kind of putting me in the situation, and, I, and right away I was like, I caught it, I was like, you know, I think you need to just go, to, go to prayer. And, and she came back within minutes, mm -hmm. right? And like nothing ever happened. She was looking, picking out her dress. And <laughs> 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 uh, but you know, we recognize these things, yeah. these these trials, these That's these the That's right. Because we stay in the Word. Yes. Come on. We pray for one another, right? We edify. We build each other up. These are the things that the Lord calls for us to do. Right? And you're, you're, I'm going to preach on that right now. I'm going to uh, speak on that right now. Yes. This is one of the things that hurts a lot of Christians. Whether it's pride, whether it's, I don't want nobody knowing, a shame. Yes. There's a, there's a situation that one of my coworkers talked about. It's their, uh, their, their family deals with shame because one of their children kind of took a wrong turn, right? And now they don't want to go back to church because they're ashamed. Hmm. So I spoke to that person. I said, listen, that's the enemy wanting to that's keep right. your family from going and fellowshipping with brothers and sisters that's that right. can edify them and build them up and forget those worries. That's right. Forget that shame. It can empower your family to take it to Jesus and leave it at his feet. This is how sneaky and conniving the enemy is.
God's comfort. The Holy Spirit. I love the Holy Spirit. Amen. I love the Holy Spirit. That's right. God knew. My Lord knew how weak we were. <laughs> yes. That's why it makes me laugh when you see these, these uh, we're only people who don't know the Lord and especially don't know the Spirit of God. Amen. They think they're just so great in their own standing, in their own mind. They think they're just, and it just makes me laugh. Because with the Holy Spirit, I'm able to do all things. This is why the Lord, the Lord Jesus went to the Father. He says, Father, I need you to send your spirit to give them strength, yes. to give them courage, yes. that they can always remember why they do what they do. Amen. That they may always remember the promises that I have for them, that I've gave them, given them, yes. to not be discouraged. The Holy Spirit is described as the comforter. Yes. John 15, 26. Let's move on to John. Fifteen twenty six. The word of God reads. Oh, you know what? Let me read this one in the Amplified. John fifteen twenty six. Yeah, I, I had told my wife to let me use her amplified uh, Bible because there was a few verses that I wanted to read it in this uh, translation. The Word of God reads fifteen twenty six. But when the Helper the comforter, the advocate, the intercessor, the counselor, the strengthener, the standby. In Greek, he is known as the parakletos or paraclete, right? He is all that for us. He is the one that we should depend on and look to when we come across our daily struggles, our weaknesses. Anxiety tries to creep in. Amen. Depression wants to slither on in. And you know, I just mentioned the words, right? But each one, each one of those words can lead a person to try to hurt themselves. Right, you, you just you hear the word anxiety or you hear the word depression. Oh, it's just, oh, he's sad. But it's deeper than that. Yeah, it's, it's deeper than that where some people have taken their life because yes. of these things. Yes. So it's an attack of the enemy. It's a lie of the enemy. And that's why for those of us that do know the Spirit of God, yes. we need to lean on Him because he's the one that's going to get us out of all that. That's right. Only through him. This is why our Lord went to the Father and said, please, send him, send them the Spirit. Amen. He is the helper comes whom I will send to you from the Father that is the Spirit of truth who comes from the Father, he will testify and bear witness about me. That's it. That's it. So everything and anything that you need to know about Christ is the Holy Spirit that's going to teach you. That's right. That's it. That's it. It's good. It's good. And you should, you know, if that's what it is, go to a Bible college. 
Go get a degree, but it's not that degree that's going to get you closer to Christ. Yeah. That can help you in being able to put a, a sermon a lot better. Maybe. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> you know. Yeah. It's the Holy Spirit. The one that gives you the the speech, the words, the words of life, right? Yeah, yeah, Is the I can tell you and testify, I ain't never uh, practiced or I never uh, went somewhere to learn how to put a five point sermon or four point, whatever they're called. That's right. I've only heard it, but I don't know what it looks like. That's right. Now, I will tell you this my dad left, there was a lot of books my dad had. My dad was a pastor back in the days. And so there was a lot of books in this library. So I was like, oh, I'll take this and take that. <laughs> right? The ones that I could read, because a lot of it was in Spanish, right? So I learned a little bit from here, a little bit from there, a little bit there. But ultimately, when it, when it came down to it, because I had no training, it was just the pastor's like, I, I told the Lord one day, when I was at the altar, I said, Lord, whatever you want to do with me, use me. Send me. And, and, and that was like, in truth, I said that. And, and this is after I had like four people, oh, the Lord said he's going to use you to preach the word of God. He's going to use you to go evangelize. And I was like, ah, maybe, maybe the Lord made a mistake on this one. No. <laughs> but it wasn't until the final one, which is about the fifth one, it was uh, Pastor Henry was like, Man of God. And then after that, this is the difference though. Because this is where, where it, it was urgency that the Lord was trying to get me to understand. After that, every time I was coming to church, Pastor Henry was over there. Man of God. Lord, you waiting on you? <laughs> every week. Man of God. You ready? Lord's waiting for you. And, and, and from that moment, I said, well, let's, let's go. Amen. And we started hitting the streets. We started coming together in uh, war room, Amen. prayer. We knew from the get-go that prayer needed to be first and foremost, a foundation Thank you, Lord. to submit ourselves before the Lord, to give Him thanks, yes. to surrender ourselves, Amen. to worship Him, yes. and to bring all our worries to Him. That's right. And not worry about how we're going to do things. Because he was going to provide everything. That's right. Amen. You might not know it, but when I saw my brother ran, ran here, that was the Lord that brought him here. Amen. That's right. Then we get to experience, a, 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 we had a, a, the live worship, yes, yeah. but true. there's more that the Lord's because of brother ran. There was more because of brother Tim. Now I have now the Lord has brought this man of God here, Amen. has brought the daughter here, has brought the sister over there. Amen. I trusted my Lord because he is faithful. Hallelujah. And when he said and he told us that I will multiply, I see my brother over there. Keep fighting. Keep fighting. He loves you. And he has not forgotten about you, but he's waiting for you to take the initiative to be like, Lord. I leave everything behind and I come for you. He will change you. He will clothe you. And he will feed you. Trust in him. And I see this. And I see it growing. And I see some weeks even more. And I said, this is the Lord. That's right. Amen. Because he is faithful. And he comforts us. Even when we have doubts. Even when the enemy is like, oh, I see there's only three of you. You know what I hit him with? Come on. That's all we need. That's it. Right. Yeah. Because somebody's going to come across this video on YouTube or on Facebook Live, yep. and somebody's going to be like, let me, let me listen to this. That's right. And, and you know what? And it's not going to be me. It's not going to be pastors. It's not going to be any of the brothers who preach and teach or sisters who preach and teach. It's going to be the Holy Spirit. Yeah. That's going to draw them. Come on. The Holy Spirit's going to be like, you hear this? You hear this? Wake up. Get up. <laughs> Go fellowship. That's right. Love my God. There is none like him. Thank you. 
who comforts us so the comfort who comforts us in all our afflictions so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort of which we ourselves are comforted by God. Amen. Let's turn to uh, 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3. And this is what I'm talking about. The Holy Spirit comforts us. God comforts us. And guess what? What is he doing that when he's comforting us? He's training us so that we can go and comfort brothers and sisters. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter one, verses three to four. God of all comfort. That's what my Bible says right here in this passage. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, Amen. Come on. Mm -hmm. who comforts us in all our affliction yeah. so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction yeah. with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. Come on, that's it. This is what I said earlier, that some of us have a hard time, whether it be by, because of pride or, or, or shame. We don't want to come to our brothers and sisters. I need prayer. Pray for me. I'm struggling. He has equipped us to take it to him when you're by yourself. But he, he has also equipped us to be able to come to my brothers or my sisters, be like, I need, I need prayer. I need to get edified. Yes. This is why we encourage you guys to come in fellowship. Yes. Come, be here, be present in the house of the Lord. The Word of God states in many in, in some of the passages in there allow to to have the elders lay hands on you. Don't let the enemy fool you. That's right. Come, fellowship, come and hear the word of God. Because that's what you're going to get here at Chosen Few Community Fellowship. That's right, amen. Yeah. True. We ain't going to sugarcoat nothing. We ain't, we ain't trying to tickle nobody's ear. Okay? We're going to preach the word of God. You're going to get into the ESV and the ASP and the KJV and the King, New King James and all translation. Always the G-O-D. Yep. Come on. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. And if something makes you feel icky, if something that's said here that was preached from the Word of God makes you feel oh, guilty, makes you feel, oh, man, I don't like the way. That's not us. That's the Holy Spirit telling you to wake up. Preach. Wake up. Come on. Repent. Turn your ways and come to Jesus. Amen. I preach with eagerness because the time is, is near. Yes. You don't know when you might pass away. You don't know if you're going to be in an accident. You don't know. You know everybody's concerned. Well, he, he, Jesus ain't came back for 2,000 years. Oh, they've been waiting for all this time. Well, what if you die? What if there's an illness? What if there's another pandemic? Are you ready to meet your maker? Are you ready to come before him? Is he going to tell you, get to the right or go to the left? And for my Christian brothers and sisters, is he going to hit you with Matthew 7? Mm. Don't be lukewarm. Be all in for the Lord. Shine your light. Do not be ashamed of Jesus. Because if you renounce him, if you say you don't know him, hmm, 
You don't want to be in front of him that day when you're there hoping to go into his kingdom. He's going to tell you, no, I never knew you. That's harsh. You know, before I get my, my life, the, the Holy Spirit was kept shaking me up. I would have dreams of being left behind. And I used to fear that, being left behind. Everybody was gone. I'm looking at everybody like gone. And I'm like, oh no, Lord. And I would be like shaking and I'm like, I gotta go look for a Bible. Like that's gonna help me. <laughs> I gotta look for a Bible in my dreams. And I'm like, I don't fear that no more. My only concern, amen. My only concern now is I don't want to get hit with Matthew 7. So I strive. I strive to live my life every day to be the light. See, I, I've said it before. You don't just preach the word. The way you carry yourself, the way you live yourself at work, with family, with neighbors, they're going to know that's a man, woman of God right there. Because there's something different about that person. That's how we should be living our lives. And it's not going to be all butterflies and roses. Because the word of God says, just because you are a follower, believer of Christ, they're going to hate you. So when you have people that, oh man, this person is giving me trouble. I've, got, I've, I've had many. And I'm like, man, what's this people tripping on? And then I, the word of God, the Holy Spirit reminds me, because you're a man of God. And they're going to hate you for no reason, just because you're a man of God. Or a woman of God. If, uh, if I could have you turn over to, let's go to chapter of John, chapter six, uh, chapter fourteen. There is something here I put in my in my little nose bit. John chapter 14. And it's uh, verses 16. The word of God reads, and I will ask the Father, well, he's just repeating over again that he's going to go and ask the Father about the Holy Spirit. You get that three times, I believe. In 16 and uh, verse 17, the same chapter, and verse 26. So four times, um, well, three times, he goes and he asks the Father, send him the, the Holy Spirit. That's confirmation there that you know that the Word of God and the Holy Spirit is here with us. Moving on over to Romans chapter 15. All it is because there's got to be trust in what the Word of God says, right? So Romans chapter 15, verse 13. The Word of God reads, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. Again, the Holy Spirit giving us hope, helping us to believe. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 6. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 6. The Word of God reads, so we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Do you believe that? Do you trust in the Lord? The three Hebrew boys, they believe. And, we, and, we, and, and, and if you believe that this is the living word of God, 
that you know that that was true. Amen. You know that our Lord, our King, came down into that fire, and He will do the same thing for each and every one of us. Amen. Trust. Psalm 27, 1. Like I said, don't take my word for it. All these scriptures that I'm giving, go back, read them. Research for yourself. That's what it should be, though. We should always have that mind of, hey, let me go see what, let me go check, we'll see what he's speaking on, what he's talking about. Psalm 27. Verse 1, the word reads, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? That's more. That's building up on more of uh, uh, that you can trust him. And you shouldn't fear nothing that the world brings before you. Psalm 118, verse 6. The Lord is, my, the Lord is on my side. I will not fear what can man do to me. Are you starting to notice what the Word of God is trying to make you guys understand. We shouldn't fear anything that the enemy brings before you. We shouldn't fear anything that the world or the enemy through the, through the world. There's going to be strife. There's going to be struggle. There's going to be all kinds of concerns. Give it to Jesus. Take it to him. Take it to him and say, Lord, I don't want this to, 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 to worry me so much that I'm not going to be have time to get into your word and, and, and get close to you and, and, and depend on you because I'm so worried. God's presence. He is always present. The brother prayed on it, right? Omnipresent. He's everywhere. Deuteronomy 30, 31, verse 7 through 8. Right? Deuteronomy. This is, and then uh, Joshua uh, chapter 1, verse 9, assures us that God goes before us and will never leave us nor forsake us, even in the midst of battles and struggles. This promise reminds us of God's constant presence and guidance. You want some more examples? <laughs> Let me give you what the Word of God says. I'll give you a few more. The Bible provides examples of faith in action. Amen. Such as Abraham's or Abraham's response to God's call, where he trusted God's promise and shield. And you can read that in Genesis chapter 15, verse 1. And Jesus' own dependence. On, the, on his father, who worked alongside him. John chapter 5, verse 17, where Jesus is telling the disciples, the father's been working, and I am working. Amen. So, to conclude this recap, with the Word of God, what we learn from the Word of God, right? The Word of God teaches us to take our cares and struggles to the Lord Jesus. By one, casting our cares upon Him, trusting in His care and provision. We read about that in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Amen. Two, Praising his faithfulness and goodness. We read about that in 1 Corinthians 
chapter 10, 13. Three, bringing our requests to him through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Amen. Philippians verse chapter 4, verse 6 to 7. Four, acknowledging his comfort and presence in our lives. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 to 4, Deuteronomy 31, 7 through 8, and Joshua chapter 1, nine, uh, verse 9. 5. Trusting in Jesus. Amen. Trust. Trust in Jesus. Trust in his word. Trust in his word because he is the word. You, you have to trust, you have to believe that everything that this tone has for us is to help us, to strengthen us, how to reach our Lord, how to get connected to Him, how to get strengthened by Him. Everything that we need to be able to survive in this world here. Remember that we, this is not our world. This is not our world. We are passing through here. Our home, we'll be, we'll be, we'll be going home soon. We'll be going home soon. You got to believe that. So by following these biblicals or biblical principles, the whole living word of God, I've heard somebody say that the Holy Bible, right? Basic instruction before leaving birth, okay. right? Yeah. Basic instructions before leaving earth. We can learn to trust God in our cares and struggles, finding comfort and peace in His loving care. Amen, amen. Has anybody experienced the Lord's living care? Amen. Do you only recognize the big things that he does for you? Or are you recognizing the small things? Come on. You got to recognize it. And you got to be thankful for all of that. I thank the Lord. I thank you, Lord, for allowing me to preach this word. I thank you for the people who you allow to be here. And I thank you for the people that I know you will be bringing. Amen. Yeah. This is your house, and you will grow it how you want it. I just pray that, and I ask each and every one of you to pray and stay in prayer fast. That this church, that this house will never change from sticking to the truth. Amen. We don't need nothing else. With that, I want to thank you. Uh, I hope that this word edified someone out there. And I hope that it, it, it shook you enough to want to get into his word. Hey, I really... Hope it shook you enough to want to just walk through those doors ne next week. Because uh, next week, uh, we're going to be having a, a, a special uh, a word coming from one of our brothers. Minister Rand is going to be bringing the word next week. Amen. So, like I said, the Lord is working. The Lord is moving. The Lord is doing things in this house. He's bringing people. And he's bringing people who are bringing people. And then he's touching people that are walking him straight through the door. Like my brother right here. The sister right here. This is what makes, this is just confirming and it just feels on my faith like God is good. God is good. He loves us and he is with us and he will not leave us. Praise the Lord. Until next week, 
I, I pray and I ask the Lord that they, he keep you and he strengthen you and that he uh, just encourages you, maybe with a shake or so, you know, so he can get into his word, right? And start, and start seeking truth, his truth, okay? So until next weekend, uh, God bless you and your family. And I, I pray you have a blessed week. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. amen.